Hello, my name is Graham Jackson. I'm a professor of haematology at the Northern Centre for Cancer Care and Newcastle upon Tyne Hospital Trust, and I work at the University of Newcastle upon Tyne in the UK. So I'm going to briefly look at three learning points around monoclonal ganopathy of uncertain significance. What are the three things we have to think about? Well, we're all aware that monoclonal ganopathy of uncertain significance is a fairly common diagnosis, and we're diagnosing it more frequently as people are doing more tests and also uh, because our population is aging. I think there are three things that we have to think about when we come across a patient with monoclonal gammopathy of uncertain significance. Firstly, we have to make sure that we're not missing an oligosecretory or non-secretory multiple myeloma. Secondly, we have to assess the risk of progression. Now, there are three key issues around the risk of progression. You are more likely to progress MGUS to multiple myeloma if you have a paraprotein that's greater than 15 grams per liter or 1.5 grams per deciliter. You're more likely to progress if it's an IgA subtype, and you're more likely to progress if you have an abnormal serum-free light chain ratio. So when we assess MGUS, it's very important to take those three key parameters into account when talking about risk of progression. Secondly, we have to remember that most patients with MGUS will never progress. But a diagnosis of MGUS can create some anxiety and it's important to reassure most of our patients that this will never impact on their life, on their medical history and on their future. The third thing we have to be wary of is that some monoclonal disease can be associated with clinical problems. It's important to check the urine to make sure there's no evidence of a glomerular or tubular issue related to the paraprotein. We also should make sure the patients have no symptoms of neuropathy. Some paraproteins are associated with neuropathic damage. We also should check for cardiac change. Uh, amyloidosis can be associated with monoclonal gammopathy, and it's very important to make sure there's no evidence of amyloidosis, particularly affecting the heart. Finally, we should check the skin and the eyes just to make sure there is no sense of a monoclonal gammopathy associated skin disease or ocular disease. But in general, remember that most monoclonal gammopathies will not be associated with problems, will not progress. And I emphasize that in most cases, it's important to reassure the patient.